Um, as I said earlier, we are working with Airbus and Rolls-Royce to fix this issue. That's our top priority. And, and compensation talks uh, will take place after the aircraft are back in the air, and we're not going to engage in that today. Um, and Andrew? Yeah, I'm um, with you. you. You've obviously been going over the planes, not just the engines. You yeah. expect the fine tooth comb. Have you found any other irregularities about the operating systems, the computerised systems, especially on the plane in Singapore? Uh, no, on, on, the, on the aircraft that we've been looked at, our focus has been on the engines, and we, we absolutely believe that's where, I mean, this is an engine failure, and it wasn't on the systems on the aircraft. In the aircraft in Singapore, the ATSB is still holding the aircraft subject to their investigations, so we still haven't had the aircraft released back to us for us to start the repair work on that aircraft. When that happens, we'll obviously be looking at everything on the aircraft before it goes back into the air. So after that engine failure on the plane in Singapore, everything did no, no, as we said before, uh, the number one engine on the aircraft uh, was uh, could not be shut off when the aircraft landed. That was a result of material coming from the number two engine, which is the engine that shut down, into the, into the wing of the aircraft, which did cause um, cause some warning to, to, to disconnect, and that didn't allow us to actually switch off the number one engine. So that is the issue, and it's purely related to the failure of the number two engine. Okay, guys. Thank you very much.